Hello everyone, this is Fraser Crane. I'm listening. You know what, I could probably get away with doing Niles Crane a little better. Let me try this. You ready? Alright, here we go. Hello everyone, this is Niles Crane. Let's get better. I like that one a lot more. Okay, we don't need all this crazy stuff. Let me get it out of the way here. How are you guys doing? My name is Tim Michael. If you've never heard of me, I make a ton of crazy videos like this on YouTube, doing all sorts of tutorials speed paints, and then of course my new podcast, which is the Artists in Central podcast, where I interview a ton of different artists. It's been a lot of fun doing that so far. If you want to check that out, just go to artisancentralpodcast.com, take a look. So this is going to be a slightly longer video, 10 minutes long, a quick walkthrough of how I drew Kelsey Grammer, also known as Frasier. I hope that you guys enjoy it. I figured I'd slow things down a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing instead of just racing through this speed paint like I usually do. Starting off with the pre-sketches, as always, very key, very important, and really considering just a basic shape for starters. And I do find that I use this shape a lot. If you see me look over here to this side of the screen, that is because I'm looking at the video as it's playing, and that way you guys aren't confused when I keep looking over here, okay? So I'm starting off with the basic sketch, which you've already seen me put down, getting that basic shape down, and now I'm going in with some more detailed lines. All of it's just using the pencil in Manga Studio EX5, and then I'll go in, I'll like get in a little bit, and then go on from there. Some things I found really important is that you really need to go ahead and start not really with trying to exaggerate things right off the bat. Maybe not the best way to go. Usually it might be better to really focus on trying to get the personality in the eyes and if they're smiling in the teeth and then trying to get that basic shape of the nose. If you can really cover those three things, usually I find that's the best start to getting a really good caricature. So as I drew this in, I focused really hard on the eyes. I didn't exaggerate them. I really tried to keep them the same. The only exaggeration that you might want to do is if you see someone squinting, you might want to squint them just a little bit more if they have really big eyes and then expand them a bit more. But otherwise, you want to make sure to get all those shapes and creases and things that make up that person's face. Because when it comes down to it, you want a likeness. I've always said draw essence, get a feel of the person and run with it, but it's really important with that essence that you get key features that are really going to set this person apart. Uh, Kelsey Grammer's cheeks, his eyes, his larger forehead, and his mouth. His mouth especially really sets him apart. His bottom lip is really cool with how it bends down in the middle, and these are all things that have to be carefully considered. I've switched over to my G pen, and I think I have it set at a pen pressure of probably 25 to 30. Um, not a pen pressure, excuse me, a uh, stabilization of 25 to 30, so I can get the cleanest lines possible. This basically means that the computer is going to take your line and clean it up a little bit. So usually if you draw digitally, um, if you're especially on a tablet like an Intuos, or you're drawing in Photoshop, your lines will often look a little jagged, but Manga Studio does a really great job in creating clean lines that still look like your line quality that you draw, not removing that likeness that's so keen um, that sets your artwork apart from everyone else's and gives you that clean line. So I definitely suggest Manga Studio. Really see about how I've really focused on his mouth. If you take a look, I've made that the center stage of the face. I did exaggerate it out. That is important. Make sure you get those exaggerations. But within those exaggerations, Try to get the likeness of the mouth as close as possible, all the way down to the teeth, believe it or not. Even getting the teeth down to a detail is very, very key. So as you're drawing and you're seeing a likeness of a person with their smile open, make sure that you try and really consider each one of the shapes of each individual tooth as you draw them out. If not, simplify things. Close the mouth. Or even if not doing that, then try and make the smile what we like to call bar teeth, which is just basically two lines of teeth with some lines just to say he's got a big grin. But usually when it comes down to it, better likeness means you're going to really focus on a lot of things within the overall exaggeration. So as you're taking this even further, it's going to be really key to really consider exaggerating things like eyes, nose, mouth. But as you're doing it, you need to make sure within that exaggeration of making it bigger or smaller to exaggerate against the other parts of the face, you want to make sure it still looks like that shape of the mouth, the eyes, and the nose that you're trying to draw. So I've inked it all out, and you can see I'm putting in my trademark deep um, line around the outside, and you guys are more than welcome to take that and run with it. 
Don't be afraid to use any of my style in your artwork. Just take it and turn it into your own thing. I am more than willing to share my technique with you guys. I am very excited to see you all use it. I love the artwork that you guys send me saying, hey look, I was inspired to do this off of yours. I love that. If it looks an awful lot like mine, just make sure to give me some credit for that. But other than that, I love when I see that you guys have run with my style and have tried to create it in your own way with your own bend. So please feel free to do that. I love when I see that from you guys. Putting in my basic flats, and as you guys have always seen, and if you're new here, I start off by putting all the flats in their own layers. And then in those layers, you'll see that I put the transparency lock and that transparency lock just makes sure that I can take that and color it separately from everything else so I can focus on just that color. It also allows me to use things like airbrushes that will not spread all over the place but will keep everything attuned into the area that I'm wanting to focus on without going and making a mess of the other parts of the face. Um, another key feature that we're going to get down to here in a little bit is doing things like hair, raised foreheads, trying to get details in hair and things like that, all the way down to uh, the colors of the jacket, to the shirt, to all those details. And it's really easy to forget to separate all these colors on separate layers. So focus on getting all these layers on, on separate layers for each color. That way when you go in and color, it's a snap, makes it a whole lot easier. And then also you're going to be working a lot with masks. So you're going to create a mask on some of these layers so that you can add extra things like um, airbrushing in red in the cheeks or things of that nature. So I've gotten a darker color now and on the layer that I'm doing the skin I've already set the um, the mask, not the mask, excuse me, I've set the transparency lock. I'm going in with the airbrush and I'm airbrushing the outsides of the face and areas that are going to get a lot of shadow. I've said this before and I'll say it again, do not be afraid of strong shadows. Don't be afraid to take that shadow and make it strong and hard, a single shot line. At this point in time, I'm not focusing on that. I'm focusing on getting overall shading trying to match it up to his face as close as possible. As I was looking at his face, I noticed something interesting. I noticed that he had bags under his eyes, and then if you look right below that, you'll see he has a ledge, and then below that, he has the actual cheek. And so I knew that I wanted to shade that cheek separate. So you'll see a line that separates the cheeks in the middle, and that's the bend that's gonna create the next part of the cheek where I'm applying the highlights in right now where you can see that that separates that top part of the cheek from the bottom of part of the cheek which really sets him out. And I think that's a key feature of his with those heavy laugh lines right here. When it comes to laugh lines, remember a laugh line is really a deep edge as you're drawing it. And so when you consider your shading, you want to consider that that black line, that ink line that you're using is the darkest part of that shadow. So if you want to get exact, you need to go ahead and try and take your shadows as close to that black as possible with still remaining in the brown clean tones. I think this really set this caricature apart, how I shaded the lips. I used an airbrush and I did everything in airbrush on the lips. The only thing that I did was add a small white highlight on the bottom of the lip to set it off. That's the only thing I did and I feel like it gave this caricature so much likeness to him just by having the airbrushed lips without filling everything in completely but doing just enough. You'll notice that I've made a couple of masks on the panels on the side in the layers panel. In one of those I have the skin, t the skin tone which is the red where I'm trying to pull the blood to the cheeks and to certain parts of the face make it stand out more. I think that, that was really key um, in most faces. Makes people look alive. Do it too much makes people look pretty drunk but that's not what we're trying to do here. So as we're going along I decided to try a new technique in this one and if you've seen a lot of stuff from Drew Struzan uh, you would know that he liked putting in highlights with a white pencil and he would go in and just draw lines, individual lines that were white pencil marks. So what I did was I went and I found a pencil with texture in it and you can find that it's built into Manga Studio AX5. I selected white and then I went in there and for all the highlights, if you were to zoom in on those highlights, they wouldn't be airbrushed highlights. They would actually be individual pencil marks. And I thought that looked really, really, really cool. So now we're coming up to the finished look. I'm just adding in some backgrounds and things like that. But everything you've seen here was mostly done with airbrush. 
and then some very small details were done otherwise. But I'm really proud of this because of its simplicity of just using airbrush, and it feels very awake and alive. It feels very rounded. Here's a good explanation of looking at those highlights there. You can see it's just individual pencil marks that are marked across that give him the highlights and things like that. All the way down to doing the highlights in the eyes and everything like that, the, the individual highlights in the eyes are also that textured pencil. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, I would love it if you would leave them in this comment box down below. Love when I get your comments. And then also, don't forget, I am supported by you guys. And if you want to be a supporter, would love to have you guys go to patreon.com forward slash to Michael Arts and consider donating $1 per video that I make here on YouTube. It's people like you that help me get more videos out, that give me more time to make more videos. The more videos that I can make here on YouTube, the less artwork that I have to do otherwise to make up for that because I need to keep that money coming in as much as possible to keep my business running. You help keep the lights on. It would really stink if I started running out of electricity because I didn't have enough support. So I would love it if you guys would consider donating. Just go to patreon.com forward slash to Michael Arts. And of course, the link is in the description below. And of course, you can take a look at the little eye thing. I think it's up over here that you can click on right there. And it'll show you all that stuff that you need to, to know to get into that. Thank you so much, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed this. Look me up on Facebook at Tim Michael Arts. Look me up on Twitter at Tim Michael Arts. I'm on Instagram all the time on Tim Michael Arts. And we're always looking up new ways. So who knows? We might even be on other things like Snapchat or who knows what I haven't tried it yet just, just put it out there just whenever you're wondering where's Tim these days look up Tim Michael Arts anywhere if I'm not there look somewhere else <laughs> all right guys I think that's about gonna do it for this video remember I've been doing a lot on my second channel these days you can take a look at some of my vlogs we just got back from Georgia from the 2015 blade show you can take a look at that I'm gonna have to re-upload that tonight because I found some audio missing it's kind of an interesting crazy video and it's actually about an hour long but if you want to see a little bit about what my wife and I were up to over the weekend would love to share that with you guys and you'll see that here on Tim Michael Arts 2 in the next few days and then finally one last thing um, I am putting up a bunch of product reviews over there so if you guys want to see some of the product reviews that I'm doing for my Canon DSLR uh, camera and some of the things that I use to shoot my videos you can take a look at all of that on Tim Michael Arts 2, my secondary channel, also known as the Tim and Shay Chronicles or Tim's Toys when I do my product reviews, okay? All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me right here on TimMichaelArts.com and, of course, here on my YouTube channel, Tim Michael Arts on YouTube. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I look forward to talking with you guys. For all of my patrons, just to let you guys know, we will have a live stream this month, as promised, as we will always do as best as we can, but it won't be on the weekend this time. We're going to try and schedule it during the week. Please be in your Patreon and check your email um, often because I will be putting out an update for when that will be out. And we're also going to see about maybe doing some other things uh, to help bring some more people in. Um, thank you so much for your support, my patrons. I love you guys. Of course, I'll put up that very important thank you box uh, that just lets you guys know that I love you all. Thank you so much. Your names are in here. If I haven't included your website in here and you want your website next to your name, just let me know. And uh, I'll make an effort to uh, get that in there next to your name. Okay? All right. God bless you guys. I'll see you next time right here on Tim Michael Arts on another YouTube video. Thank you so much. And uh, Kelsey Grammer, if you ever watch this, I'm a big fan. Get in touch with me.